last question for you. What would the veteran David Lindsay tell the rookie David Lindsay if he could go back in time? This, this one's easy. Okay. What I, what, what I can teach you may make you a better firefighter. But if I haven't made you a better person, I failed. Okay. That sounds really profound. Break it down for me. Like, I mean, because I think we could just leave it there and, sure. and it sounds real good, right? Right. But let's, let's, let's dig a little bit. What do you mean? Well, we, we, we touched on Todd Crow a little bit earlier. I'd, like I said, I, I was celebrating my 30th anniversary on the day we buried Todd. Um, but I had lost a brother earlier to cancer um, mm -hmm. about 11 years before. Um, things changed in my life and everything. But um, at that point, um, I, I didn't want to be a leader. I, I mean, I wanted, to, I wanted to lead, but I wanted to be behind everybody. I wanted to be behind every fireman. I wanted to be behind their families. I wanted to be behind their kids. And I wanted them to know if anything goes south, this is what you're getting from me. Hmm. And I mean, I think, I think we can do that in general as, as a fire department. Um, when uh, um, I've had a chance to, to do a little bit of teaching at some honor guard uh, academies, and uh, one of the things that I tell the guys is, is I always ask the guys that are coming through that are wanting to be honor guard members, I'll say, what, what are, when you're at a, a, a line of duty death funeral, what are those people you know, what's your role there as an honor guard member? Well, they'll say, well, we're there to take care of the family. And I'll tell them, no, you're wrong. Hmm. Your role there is everybody in that auditorium, all those living firefighters, all those living spouses, they're looking at you and they're going, if anything happens to my firefighter, this is how I'm going to be treated. Hmm. So hmm. When, when we talk about that, I mean, if you break it down to the personal level, yeah, well, you can be firefighters. Man, when I first came to work, I mean, I heard the guys talking about you know, stepping out on their wives, you know, telling them they were going to a part-time job and I knew they were going to the bar and stuff like that. That didn't make them bad firefighters. Uh, you know, I kind of questioned their ethics a little bit, but you know what, if, if, if you make them, a, if you're a good person, this job is easy. Hmm. This job, and I mean, you think about it, we go into people's houses. Um, and, and I used to, you talked about Ray O'Dell. He always, he the story he used to always tell, you come in and you throw down your, your meal money. There's hundreds of dollars at most stations sitting there on that counter. Mm -hmm. I can't ever remember anybody taking advantage of that and walking away with it. So, you know, I, th I think the people that come to the fire service in general are, are good people. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, th I think uh, the expectations of the city, and, and, you know, think about it. Um, whether it be somebody like Ross Perot, or, you know, Mark Cuban, one of the biggest business owners or anything, or whether it's that guy that's living on the street corner right up the, you know, the road from the fire station, they call us when stuff's going bad for them. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, we've, we've got to be good people. So that's, that's the thing I always tell guys. If, if you walk away from here a better person, then I've done, I've done a good job. But if you haven't, I've, I've failed that person. I haven't, not myself, you know, failed, but I've failed, you know, teaching you the right things. Hmm. What has impressed me, man, is, is these aren't words that you speak and you just call people to. Uh -huh. But if you don't know David Lindsay and the things that he's involved with, um, and I'm going to botch the term, but I mean, the amount of work that you've done with cancer and mm. the fight that we're fighting as firemen in not only Dallas, but the state, I don't know a guy that's doing what you're doing. Um, I mean, you're, you're leading that right. for us. And so... I mean, I don't know if, if the guys that are in the guy in the girl the guys and the girls that are watching this realize that you're you're the guy that's behind this. Um, you know, to see um, you know what you're doing with Crotal Foundation, um, to see what you're doing, you know, all these areas, man, you're living this stuff. And so for me, when you came to me and you were like, Lack, like, I think you're doing a good job. Hey, we need to do this one too. It was a no-brainer for me. Right. I mean, to have you at the table, man, is an honor. Like I, I feel like to me, like, it's just like with, with John, you know, or Lieutenant Murray, sorry. Um, I'm sitting across from him and I'm like, dude, I don't have any place sitting at this table with this guy. No. Um, I feel the same way with you, man. Right. Um, and that's, that's purely just based on your actions. And so, dude, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, man, my pleasure. Yeah, this, this has is... been, this has been awesome. Right. Uh, man, I appreciate you. Yep. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, appreciate sir. it.